Hello everybody. Um, so um, this keynote is talk about cloud gaming, uh, but basically I'm going to start with a painting. Uh, first, because I think it's beautiful, and secondly, because I think it's representative of what cloud gaming is going to bring in the industry. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm actually delighted that you are here and that you can listen to to these new ideas. Uh, from our point of view at J Cluster, cloud gaming is going to change the game industry. Is going to represent a revolution, and I'm going to explain you uh, in these few minutes why and how we think that is going to change uh, the industry and how it's already impacting the game industry today. So, what is cloud gaming? From our perspective, cloud gaming is the server-based, real-time rendering of graphically rich games within a low-latency network environment. So. So this is the definition of cloud gaming. So what cloud gaming is not, for example, is when we talk, the previous panel was about social games, games on Facebook. So most of the Facebook games, you can think that you have an experience that is in the cloud, but that's not corresponding to the cloud gaming definition because those games are, for example, asynchronous and you do not have a, a, a pure real-time experience between multiple devices, which is what cloud gaming is enabling. So how does it work? cloud gaming. So you have uh, servers, game servers, that are processing the games. Those, those games are then streamed uh, on the network to connected screens. Basically, cloud gaming allows to take your game and to put it everywhere in any connected screen. It can be, in theory, it can be in your car, it can be in your living room, if you have a set-up box, if you have a smart TV. It can be on your PC, on your Mac, and of course on your mobile phones. So that's the, the principle of cloud gaming. What you are seeing here in this diagram is uh, our game machine, uh, and I will have some more information about it. What are the, the key components uh, in cloud gaming? The key components, what you need in order to uh, enable the power of cloud gaming is to have processing. So uh, the processing uh, is the first component. Then you need to have network. Because if you are processing uh, your game, uh, it has to be able to go through in good conditions so that the quality of the experience uh, uh, is valid. Then you need to have interactivity. And this interactivity is bring by game studios. So here you have a bunch of our partners. Some of them are folks from the casual gaming industry. Some of them are, are, are among the leading game publishers uh, uh, in the world. And what we are doing at J-Cluster is we are the layer and the, the technological platform that is allowing uh, uh, this experience to happen. So great processing power uh, with NVIDIA and Intel. So we are working together with them on the grid, uh, which is a dedicated hardware for cloud gaming that NVIDIA has been developing. Uh, and Intel is one of our, our shareholders uh, at J-Cluster. So they are very important for that. Uh, and the network component is managed by uh, some of our partners here. So they are uh, very large carriers, either in Europe or in Japan. Uh, so let's continue and talk about uh, a brief, brief history of cloud gaming companies. Uh, so J-Cluster is a startup, but the company has been founded in the year 2000. And we are actually the first company in the world who made a demonstration of cloud gaming. It was at E3 in the year 2001 on an IPAC compact device. For, the, for those who remember, it was some kind of a very big uh, uh, phone. Um, uh, so we have launched uh, cloud gaming since the year 2004 commercially in Japan. Uh, and uh, we are, our business model is based on partnering with large tel telecom companies who are going to uh, allow the distribution. So we are really the platform company and the, the big carriers are distributing the service for us. Then you probably heard about OnLive, who is also an interesting company. Uh, so uh, they launched a, a service in, in North America in the year 2010. Uh, they have a business model that is slightly different as they are B2C. Uh, uh, and what they have been doing is they have not been partnering with telecom companies. They went over the top. And in North America, it can be an issue to go over the top because the quality of the networks are very vari variable. And as we saw in my first diagram, you need to have a great network if you want to have great uh, game experience uh, in the cloud. Then Gaikai, 
uh, uh, who is uh, uh, the, the last uh, to come uh, uh, in this, uh, this deck of slide. They launched in 2011 uh, across the internet. They have a business model which was not based on transaction, on game, but was based on free trial of high-end games. So you could go on Facebook and you can try a game, uh, or you can go on the, uh, I think they had a deal with Walmart, so you could go on the website of Walmart and you could try a video game before you actually buy it. So, uh, and they got acquired by Sony PlayStation uh, in 2012 for close to $400 million. So what it means is that uh, cloud gaming is a big business uh, and uh, even the leading platform of today, like Sony, really believe in it and they are planning to integrate it into the PlayStation 4. Uh, you know, so that's really a panorama of, uh, I think, three interesting companies. There are others, uh, uh, smaller ones, uh, that uh, also exist. Uh, so I would like to talk a little bit of a new partnership. We are announcing it today. I'm pleased, actually, to, uh, uh, to tell uh, to the industry that we have Electronic Arts, who is joining uh, the J Cluster platform. So uh, we are announcing this today. Uh, it's a global agreement uh, on a, on a multi-year basis, which means that we will soon have, uh, in addition to the games from Konami, from Warner Brothers, Disney, Electronic Arts joining uh, the J Cluster platform. So it's a very important sign for the industry. Usually, Electronic Arts and uh, you know they kind of uh, make good decisions in terms of which platform they choose. And uh, so this is, I think, a very important part. Uh, and uh, uh, really, uh, we are very honored to have uh, EA coming uh, on the platform. Now, for the people who want to see a little bit what is a cloud gaming service, I'm going to show you here what we have been doing together with Orange in France. So it's a video. Uh, Orange has 230 million customers in the world, 230 million and they are uh, the largest, one of the largest carriers in the world. And what we have been doing is launching this cloud gaming service with them, and it's reaching several million households uh, in the French market. Basically, you have a game console, you can create your avatar, you can try old games for free, and you don't have any dedicated hardware for that. So you don't need to pay $400, $500 to buy a game console. You have it in your living room, you can play on your PC and your Mac, you can play on your TV, multiplayer, real time. So you can organize competitions, play with your friends. You have a parental control feature so that uh, households can control the type of content. So if you don't want your kids to play violent, violent games, you can do it. So it's very easy to use uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's a service that uh, we believe is very successful. You have some of our partners that are highlighted here. So that's a, a quick video to show you what it's doing and how it's working. So it's very, very easy to use. It's actually integrated in the household of the end user. So as a game developer, if you ask yourself, OK, you know, there's new platforms that are going to be launched uh, before the end of the year. There's the PlayStation 4. There's the Xbox One. Great hardware, expensive. but. Uh, you know, you need to ask yourself what's the size of the market, what's the size of the opportunity. We see that uh, uh, mobile, iOS, and, uh, and Android represent huge opportunities, huge install based. So when those new devices are going to come, they have to create their market share, right? And before a studio makes money out of it, it's an investment, it's a risk. So what we are doing here is to go very, very fast. So uh, the footprint of Orange in France is something like 4 million boxes that are available uh, in, in the entire country. And just with one click, with a very short software update, end user have access to that. And PlayStation 3, for example, on the French market is less than 4 million. And it took them seven years to reach that number. 
So just to show you a little bit the scale uh, uh, and, and the interest of this. So from the end user, what they are getting uh, with our cloud gaming service is two universe. You have one universe which is based on subscription, where you are going to be able to pay $5, $10, $15 every month. You are going to be able to uh, enjoy a lot of games here, 150 games. You are going to be able uh, uh, to really discover video games in a very unique ways, like you can play the games with a remote control. The casual games can be played with a simple remote control, or they can be played, uh, uh, so this is uh, a feature that we are going to launch uh, before the end of the year. You can play them with your remote, with a smartphone. You actually sit in front of your TV, you have your smartphone, and you play uh, your casual games. And the second universe is the universe that we call digital distribution for higher end games. Here you are going to be able to buy a game at a full price. Uh, you are going to have new releases and you are going to have AAA games. So that's really the two universes. So it's really a, a great combination for casual audience who doesn't know anything about video games. They don't even know that they have a game console in their living room that they don't have to pay for. Uh, and for the second audience who is, have, I would say, is more hardcore, midcore, and has expectation. Uh, on the, the type of games that they want to have. Talking a little bit about uh, the value chain and uh, the business model principles. So the business model principles we have, uh, so this is based on really revenue sharing. And uh, I was talking about uh, the three key players. For us, the telecom operator is a key player. If we want to be successful in the North American market, we believe it's very important to have strong partners to help us on the network side. And this is what they are doing, each of them. So uh, the telecom carrier is taking care of the customers, taking care of the marketing, creating uh, the brand, uh, and most important probably, they help us create a great service and to make sure that the quality of the stream that the end users are going to get are going, is going to be great and that they are going to have a great quality when they play the game. This is very important uh, for cloud gaming. Then the game studios, of course, we want them to, uh, to work with us and to bring their games on the platform to use the SDK. We have more than 200 titles uh, in our catalog. And uh, this is something that uh, our teams are building every day. And as Jcluster, what we bring is the technology, uh, we bring the content operations, and we br bring new features like uh, the smartphone uh, remote control application or the community features, uh, the friends features, the ranking system, all those things are, uh, I would say, worked on on the fly, and our technological team is, uh, uh, is improving the service uh, uh, every month. So what are the benefits? Uh, you know, you are going to say this is all nice, beautiful video, nice music, but what's the benefit for, for the end user of cloud gaming? You know, why? Uh, first one, we can see that it's space, you know, in the background picture. You don't need to have that many uh, devices uh, to enjoy uh, video games. Uh, so hardware becomes less important. So that's something that is, that is really important to take into consideration when you are reaching the non-gamers. For non-gamers, to pay for a game console or to pay for a game machine is a hurdle. It's a showstopper sometimes. It's a problem, let's say. So we are eliminating this issue. So gaming is becoming a service. You know, it's, not, it's not a hardware anymore. It's just a service. It has to be easy to, uh, to access. What we are doing is reducing the friction. So cloud gaming is allowing to launch your game instantaneously. Even if you are on mobile, on iOS, you want to try a game. If your game is heavy, you need to download it. You, it can take some time, uh, depending on your network conditions. With cloud gaming, you can launch your game instantaneously. And it's, uh, the benefit is really high for very large games, for example. Uh, one of our partners, Konami in Japan, uh, what they did is they have an iOS game, a baseball game, uh, which is playable locally. And uh, from time to time, actually, when you make a, a home run, then the game goes to the network and connects to the cloud, to the Jcluster servers, and is processing the console version of the game on your, on your smartphone, something that you can never do with the smartphone itself. So that's one example of uh, how some great publishers are using cloud gaming uh, in order to improve the, the quality of experience. And you don't need, you know, patch or update or bug for the end user is something that disappears. 
Why? Because it's all handled on the server side by JCluster and by the game studios. So that's a huge benefit. Your game is always here. It's always updated. You always have the latest version. So that's uh, helping a lot on the convenience. Then, you know, if uh, you, you have a game console and it breaks, or if you have a, a laptop, it breaks. Uh, if you have a mobile, it breaks. Whatever that you have that breaks, the game service continues. It's still here because er everything is stored uh, in the cloud and uh, you just need to put your login and you can beneficiate and you have all your history. Even if you decide to stop being a customer, you decide that uh, you don't have enough money, you don't want to subscribe because you're going to vacation, your data is saved and you can recover uh, your games and uh, all your history uh, when you come back. Then the other benefit is that you can play on multiple screens. Uh, so you can play on your TV, you can play on uh, tablets, Mac, all of this multiplayer. Uh, so that's also a big benefit. If you can't have access to your living room, you can go to another room, take your laptop and continue your game at the place where you saved it last time. So that's, a, that's a very, very interesting. And uh, the multiplayer experience is also a lot easier because um, you can uh, uh, access a huge quantity of friends uh, within the network of, uh, of each carrier and launch a game uh, uh, really seamlessly. So the most importantly is that all of those experiences are done real time and in a synchronous way. So there's no concept of delay uh, for cloud gaming. To talk a little bit about the benefits for the game studios of cloud gaming, why do we believe that this is going to, to prevail is that for the first time, you know, I've been coming to Casual Connect for a long time and to many other game conferences and I've been hearing forever Yes, yes, we are going to do one game on mobile and we are going to do one game on TV and it's going to be the same game and the reality is that it's not true. The only way uh, that this happens is actually by having a unified layer and to ha by having a unified uh, development ecosystem to have one code that will rule many screens and this is what cloud gaming is, uh, is enabling. So. As a game developer, uh, you, are, you, know, you will be able to create new experiences. So it's not going to be, I'm going to make one version for mobile, I'm going to make one version for TV, one version for PC. You are going to make one version for JCluster, and this is going to be working on all the different screens. And you are going to have one experience that is going to be adapted. When you play on TV, you will have one specific display. When you play on mobile, you have another display and the JCluster platform automatically uh, defines the resolution and the game settings in order to enable uh, a good experience. Then, very important, you are going to be able to learn more than ever on gamers and what they do. Because cloud gaming, you know exactly what's going on real time, all the time, and you can patch your game on the fly. So it's really a fantastic tool for uh, for game studios to interact with uh, you know, their audience, with uh, their communities, and to improve their games on the fly. So th that can be very interesting for free-to-play games, for example. <coughs> then uh, it's a unique opportunity to reach mass market, uh, because what we are bringing here is bigger than uh, the game console universe. It's really talking to people who don't define themselves as gamers, generally. And how do we do that? How do we do that? We have this device here that we call the Game Machine. So it has been launched in Japan on the 20th of June. And what is it doing here? A picture for, uh, so for everybody to see. What it's doing is that for close to 99 US dollar, you have a game console that is plug and play that you put in the back of your TV and that is connecting to the network and that is allowing you to enjoy games from Ubisoft, games from Warner Brothers, uh, uh, in the future, games from Electronic Arts. So, and you put it in your pocket, and it's smaller than an iPhone. So you can see here, I have iPhone 4, and I have the game machine. So, and I have a video here that uh, will show you uh, how this is uh, actually marketed in Japan. Shinji Dai Cloud Game G Cross Tanjo Do 
Voilà. So, very Japanese and a very funny and great advertisement here. But what, it, what is important to, to hear here is that this is really enabling TVs, you know, you know like uh, the, the, the dilemma of the smart TVs that are not that smart, that people don't really connect because they do, you don't really have uh, a benefit to do it. Here, uh, you just have to plug it in the back of your TV with HDMI and you have a game console. So that's, uh, we believe, pretty cool and we are very happy of, uh, uh, of the launch of this device uh, on the market and there is strong demand of the game machine in other markets. So it will come soon uh, in, in other territories. So to talk a little bit about the perspectives uh, on cloud gaming. So what I've been showing here uh, is really the very beginning. Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, today, as Jcluster being a startup, we have a universe of 10 million households uh, that have access to cloud gaming, which is a great number, but it's still, uh, it's still uh, small. We have had 23 million unique game sessions on TV. So this number is, is, is very interesting. And the game sessions that we have had are quite long. So we have an average uh, game session of 20 minutes. So people are really engaged uh, uh, in the service. And the feedback that we are getting uh, from the end users is that they really love it. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's very interesting. But at the end of the day, cloud gaming so far has been, you know, let's take games that exist on other platform that have been developed for other platform and bring them you know, in the cloud. So there is a direct benefit by the fact that this is uh, dematerialized and that uh, uh, there is a convenience aspect, but the power of the cloud is not fully utilized and it's not fully used. So uh, what remains to be built uh, by the industry is uh, what I call cloud gaming 2.0, which is going to be uh, you know, taking uh, and using those ideas that I put here uh, new gameplay mechanics, uh, interoperability of the different networks, uh, new game design concepts and ideas that are going to really take the benefit and the power of I'm starting my game on my TV, I'm continuing on my mobile, then I switch to my iPad, and the game detects that, automatically follow my path, and the game experience I have is adapted. So this is really something that we believe is magic and that remains to be built and the Jcluster team is working very hard uh, with uh, its partners in order to create this experience and also talking about unique games that will be developed specifically for the cloud. This is something that is going to happen uh, in the near future. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. So what we believe is that cloud gaming is the ultimate way to dematerialize gaming and turns it into a great service for a better game experience. Thank you very much. We have about two minutes left. Any questions? Um, hi. Um, so can you describe a little bit more your partnership with the, with the, um, uh, with the um, companies in the US, the telecommunication companies, and what you need and what kind of bandwidth requirements and latency does that help you with versus if you did not have that partnership? Yeah, so, uh, so the, the carriers are, are very important partners for us. Um, and uh, what they do is that uh, they are able to allocate, so the, the bandwidth requirement for cloud gaming are really depending on the quality you want to give, the quality of the resolution you want to have, what's going to be the, the audio quality you want to have, so you have, I will say, uh, kind of a wide spectrum here. Uh, but uh, from our perspective, uh, you know, if you want to have a 720p stream, uh, you need to have a, a, a bandwidth allocation of six to seven megabits. Uh, so it, it, in, the, in North America, it will require fiber, uh, for example. But um, the way we are working with Carrier is that they are warranting to us and to the game publishers uh, a specific bandwidth which means that if you're at home and you, and you want to play Assassin's Creed on your TV and uh, you have your daughter who is uh, downloading a big file, well, uh, what it means is that cloud gaming is going to have the priority uh, from the carrier perspective. So that means that the, the quality of experience on the game is going to be the priority and it is going to be preserved. So this is, this is an important aspect of our partnership uh, 
with the telecom companies, outside of the fact that uh, also uh, people know them uh, and that uh, people are kind of used to pay them as well. So the billing aspect is, uh, is another part uh, that, is, that is very important for us. Um, I was just wondering what uh, reaction you had from the console makers that you're essentially kind of cutting out of the business. Were they okay with it because they make more money on the games anyway, or were they pretty upset about it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very good question. So, uh, so basically, the console makers, one of them booked uh, a cloud gaming company. So they booked uh, Gaikai uh, and for a, a good bunch of money, for $380 million. So cloud gaming should be part of the PlayStation 4 at some point. So, and the reason why they did that is because they see this as a, as a big thread and they see this as uh, probably the future of, of gaming. So I think that uh, PlayStation did the right move. Then I don't know uh, about the price, if it was uh, adequate uh, or not. But clearly they see this uh, as something very, very interesting and uh, as a competition. It's a competitive uh, service. What we are doing at the end of the day is we are all competing for the time of human beings and the time when they have, you know, the, the leisure time of people. And, uh, uh, you know, you can have that many consoles or you can have that many entertainment devices, but your time or your energy for gaming is limited in one day. And what we are doing with carriers, uh, J Cluster is building an alliance of with the biggest carriers in the world in order to create this, this great network that will enable you know, a global uh, cloud gaming experience. And I could understand that some of the console manufacturers have concern about that. Great, thank you very much, Savan. Thank you for thank your you. talk. Thank, thank you, everybody. You.